Welcome back to Floki's Models. Today we're going to start work on BD-1 from Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. The files was created by Mr. Badley. I'll leave a link in the description to his Patreon. He has created files for more than just BD-1, but also Chopper, BB-8, R-Series Astromex, plus many, many more cool things. So let's jump in here and get started. First thing I'm going to do is take an M3 by 15 mm countersunk bolt and nut and firmly secure this into place into the lower leg. This bolt will be used as a guide for a timing belt that will go into the leg later. Next, two bearings are added to each lower leg section. Bearing type 6904-2RS. This is a really tight friction fit. I did have to do a little sanding to get them to go in smoothly. Make sure you don't sand too much or your legs will be wobbly. Next, I glued the lower leg skin to the lower leg frame using CA super glue. This will hide that screw head that we installed in the first step. Not all of the bottom leg gets covered with this skin, so it's a good idea to add the CA glue to the skin and not the lower leg frame. I then prepped all the parts for painting with my usual routine of SLA printer resin, sanding, and filling until I got a finish I was happy with. To start the painting session, I first took Tamiya XF20 medium gray, mixed 50-50 with Mr. Leveling Thinner, and airbrushed all the parts I will later paint red. The reason I went with medium gray is because I already had it in the airbrush from another project. Now I'm going to take Tamiya X7 Red, mix 50-50 with Mr. Leveling Thinner, and I'm going to start painting all the pieces that I want to be red. In Jedi Fallen Order, there is many, many different uh, paint schemes you can get for BD-1, so pretty much anything you want to paint the droid, it's up to you. This part here is the lower leg booster cover. I'm going to speed the painting process up here, and then just call out the parts as I'm doing them. This is the upper leg booster cover. This is BD-1's ear covers. And this part here is called the red eye. That's why I'm painted red. <laughs> and this is the inner red eye. Again, the reason why I painted it red. Using Tamiya XF1 Flat Black, I'm going to paint all the parts that will get later painted a metallic color. These parts are greeblies that go into the lower leg section. First metallic paint I'm going to use is Alclad 2 Dark Aluminum. This part is the lower inner leg skin.
going to be using AK Extreme Metal Chrome for the next parts. I have tried this once before and I wasn't happy with it. And honestly, I'm still not extremely happy with this paint. I will definitely be sticking to Alkalad lacquers from now on. This part here is one of the boosters. This here is uh, BD's hollow projector and one of the antennas. Now that painting is done, we can get back to assembly. This part here is called the full spindle and friction fits into the lower bearing. I did a little bit of sanding on the spindle, but you don't want to do too much because it, like it needs to be a tight friction fit. So using one of these bar clamps, I was able to push the spindle all the way into the bearing. And it ends up moving nice and smoothly. This part is called the leg pulley, and it friction fits into the top bearing on the lower leg. I used a bit of Remington oil here since it was what I had close to help ease the fit. The leg pulley gets slid in from the front side. I used a spare bearing here to make sure that my bar clamp had enough area to grab onto so I could press this leg pulley into place. Gotta be careful here not to apply too much pressure or you could crack the side of the leg. The shoulder on the leg pulley should set about even with the top side of the bearing. Now it's time to add some wiring into the leg. The instructions say to use servo cable, which I would recommend actually doing that, but I had a whole bunch of this uh, 22 gauge wire on hand, so I figured I'm going to use it instead. I end up cutting three pieces of wire, each 36 inches in length. I cut one red and two black, and I marked one of the black ones with a piece of tape so I could tell the difference between the two later on. You'll want to do this for both sets of legs so you'll end up with six wires in the end. There is a hole in the leg that then goes into a channel, which when you pop out on the other side, will have another channel to run through to be able to go into the lower leg portion. And this here is the second channel that I was talking about. Then take this bundle of wires and stick into a hole that's on the top of the lower leg section and then run that all the way down to the bottom. It's a bit hard to tell here, but there is a indentation on the upper leg portion that you need to get lined up with another indentation that's on the leg pulley that we've press fitted into the bearing. And this is to make sure that the leg is going to be in the proper alignment. The top and bottom leg portions are then held together with one M4 by 30 millimeter countersunk bolt and nut. Now the two major leg components are attached together. Now I'm going to take a rough measurement to find how much of this 
GT2 6mm timing belt I'm going to need. Starting from the lower hub, going to run this timing belt up to the upper pulley, loop it around the M4 bolt, and then bring it back down to the lower hub. When you tighten this up, you want to make sure that the leg is as straight as possible. I'm going to use CA super glue here to hold in the inner leg cover. I had also added glue around the perimeter. The hub cover here fits in place with a 5mm long M4 screw. It just self taps itself into the plastic. Then a check to make sure the leg mechanism still works. It seems to be working fine. Now to start adding the greeblies. There is one that fits into the lower leg section here that I attach with super glue. This cover in it has a cutout to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the wires. Then three greeblies get added to the upper leg portion. There will be more greeblies to add to this leg later on. Now both legs get slotted into the base that has the feet printed in place. One side went right in, but this side fought me a lot. Once I got it into place, each leg is held in with one M4 by 25 mm bolt and one M3 by 22 mm bolt. I need to cut two lengths of the timing belt, each of them 42 teeth long. This is going to allow the neck to move. I'm also going to need two sections of 4mm brass tubing. Each section needs to be 8mm long. I cut this with a cheap uh, tubing cutter. Now we're going to take them two pieces of the timing belt that we cut, and we're going to essentially make a loop with these neck pieces here. This is the 4mm brass rod that we cut, and they're essentially going to act as bearings for M3 screws that are going to run through the neck. Starting with the lower part here, we're going to take an M3 by 15mm bolt and run it through that brass tubing. Then we're going to take an M3 by 35mm bolt, and we're going to run it through the top hole. This is going to keep tension on the neck, and we're going to remove that later when we go to put the head on. Next, going to need the tilt gear, the main body bar, and the main body pieces. Take an M4 square nut and fit it into the slot in the bar. Hold the tilt gear inside the main body and slot the bar through the shoulder holes and into the tilt gear. Line up the holes and fix with an M4 by 25 millimeter bolt. And this is what it should look like. going to attach the first servo of the build now, model MG996R to main body rear panel A.
put an M4 square nut into the slot on both sides of the main bar, followed by the inner cores. Then CA glue the main hubs into place. This is body rear panel B, and it just slides and snaps right into place. Next, going to pull the wires from each side of the legs into the main body, and then thread them up through the neck. Use two M4 by 15 millimeter long countersunk bolts and push them through the neck and fit the nuts on the other side. This ended up to be pretty tricky. The way I finally got the nuts onto the bolts on the other side was to use a piece of blue tack poster putty on the end of a flathead screwdriver to hold the nuts into place as I tighten the bolt. As you can see, not much room to reach that rear bolt. Take the booster and booster cover, line them up on the upper leg, and run an M4 by 25mm bolt through them to attach each leg to the main body. Level the body on the legs, and take two M4 by 10mm bolts and attach rear body panel A to the main body. The servo should match up with the gear inside. Time to start working on the head. First going to assemble the Lazy Susan. This is main head base A and main head gear. I'm using 5mm plastic bearings for this. I'm just going to keep fitting the bearings in here until this entire channel is full. Once all the bearings are in place, going to close the hole with the bearing seal and an M4 by 10mm nut and bolt. Going to take two pieces of the 4mm brass tubing at 3mm long and press fit into the two holes on the inside of the gear. Then take piece main pivot and cut two more pieces of the tubing at 4.5mm and, and press fit into place. Use an M3 by 8mm and an M3 by 15mm countersunk bolt and screw these through the main pivot and into the tubing on the main head base. Install the main head drive gear by sliding it into the indentation on the Lazy Susan and then put the Lazy Susan back into the original position. Next slide head assembly A into head assembly B and add a little bit of glue to keep them in position. Next I'm going to make some servo rods for the neck tilt using flexible filament. I cut a piece of the TPU with flexible filament about 6 inches long. Then using an old soldering iron that I use for everything but actual soldering, I'm going to melt the bottom of it just a bit. Then want to tap on it just to flatten the bottom out as much as possible. 
want it to look something like that. Then I'm going to thread that through the bottom of the main head assembly. And then go thread the flexible filament through this servo rod. And then thread the servo arm on top of that. Then I'm going to create a little bit of tension on the filament with a pair of tweezers. Then taking that old soldering iron again, going to melt the top of the TPU onto the head of the servo arm, just locking it into place really good. And this is what you want it to look like. These should uh, bounce around pretty good. Now we're going to do the same thing but for a hollow projector. I'm going to feed the flexible filament through the hole and then pull it up and around and melt one end of it with the soldering iron. Then once it's cooled down, pull it tight. Then thread the filament through the servo rod and servo arm. Then using the soldering iron, we're going to melt the TPU into the head of the servo arm. This is a 16 channel servo controller and it's going to screw into place right here in the head. I went with this servo controller instead of the Adafruit that is recommended because all the pins was already soldered in place. And any time I can get away from soldering pins, I will. I'm going to take this MG92B 360 degree servo and attach the head servo gear to it. This then lines up with the other gear that's already in the main head and then using the screws provided, attach into place. I'm going to take an MG90 servo and run the cable from it through this trench right here. This here is the servo that controls the hollow projector. This servo is what controls the blink function on the red eye. Now to attach the head to the body need to take out that M3 screw that we put in temporarily earlier that we was using to keep tension on everything. Then once we get the head lined up here on the neck, we can put this M3 screw all the way back through and then use a nut on the other side to tighten it all up. You want to watch out for all the wires that's also running through the neck as well. You really don't want to screw into any of them because that would be a pain in the butt to rewire all this.
This is the head frame that holds three MG90S servos that control the neck tilt and lift. Pull all the neck cables through the hole in the frame, then add a cable tie to keep them all in place while you work on it. Use two M3 by 20 millimeter nuts and bolts to attach the head frame to the neck. This part can be a bit fiddly. I again used a piece of blue tack to hold the nut into place while I threaded the bolt into it. Once the frame was finally in place, I attached the servo arms to the servos using the screws that came with them. Next, add two pieces of the 4mm brass tubing 3 millimeters long to the hollow projector eye sockets. Two M3 by 5 millimeter long bolts are used to attach the hollow projector into the brass tubing. Next, going to start on the red eye blink function. Take the eye leaves, stacking them on top of each other as you go. Next, add the red eye ring and make sure that the iris in the center is completely open. Then add the inner ring, making sure the leaf pins line up with the holes in the ring. Make sure it's all lined up and sitting flat. Wire up a 5mm blue LED and fit it to the center of the gear ring assembly. Attach the gear ring assembly onto the main frame using two M3 by 20mm bolts. Once it's bolted into place, make sure the iris open and closes smoothly. Next I'm going to attach the face to the head. It was a lot easier to have my wife hold the face in place as I took two M3 by 8mm screws to secure the face into the head. This is how BD1 sits right now. In the next video, I'm going to wire everything up and get him moving and making noise. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I can't believe that now I'm over 175 subscribers. Never would have thought that anyone would want to see me build random models and random Star Wars stuff. But again, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned, because I have many more videos to come.